Let's talk first of all where heavy metals come from. And I'm not talking about uh, Def Leppard or any of these guys. No one gets that joke? <laughs> where, for, for, where does lead come from? Now, first of all, uh, anyone know about lead, lead pipes? Mm -hmm. See, lead pipes are the first pipes that we use for carrying water. In fact, the Latin word for lead is plumbium, which is why they, we call plumbers plumbers. You guys know that? Yeah. And why the chemical symbol for lead is PB, for plumbium. See, I knew you guys would learn something tonight. Yes. Well, we don't really use lead pipes anymore. We use primarily copper pipes, but the soldering between joints is still lead. And so when water's been sitting in pipes for a long time, there increases the concentration of lead. So if you're going to drink that water or cook with it, you should run it for at least 30 to 60 seconds from your water before you use that water. That'll cut down the lead that you're getting from drinking water. Um, also paint. Now, we don't use lead in paint anymore. But lead made paint brighter, it made it last longer. Lead paint was outlawed in the United States in 1977. What do you think happened to all that lead paint? China. We sold it. We sold it to uh, India, China, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Africa. And now it's all coming back to us in the form of imports. Last year alone, Walmart pulled over 2 million toys off the shelf that were painted with lead-containing lead paint. I told you, lead is very bright in paint. It makes brighter paints, brighter colors. So they use it to paint these toys for toddlers. So they're all bright and beautiful. The real insidious part of this is lead tastes good. Lead has a sweet flavor. So when kids are chewing on these toys, they taste good and they chew more. It's insidious. And so you've got to be careful. Make sure that you have lead-free toys. Uh, China's really getting all over this, trying to prevent lead-based paints from being used in toys again. And then, of course, automobile exhaust. And in fact, automobile exhaust is our number one source of lead contamination. So if you live in an inner city, any place with a lot of cars, you're breathing in lead from particulate matter. Then we have mercury. Uh, our number one source of mercury contamination is seafood. Mercury is a natural toxin. It's released in the environment mostly through volcanic eruptions. The mercury goes into the seawater, it gets picked up by bacteria, and then protists, plankton, then shrimp eat the plankton, fish eat the shrimp and the plankton, big fish eat the little fish, and the mercury bioaccumulates in the largest fish. So the bigger the fish, the more mercury it is as a function of percent. And so the recommendation is don't eat too much of the larger fish. Uh, salmon, kingfish, marlin, tuna, uh, the larger fish tend to have the most amount of mercury. Now I'm not saying avoid those fish because they're also very good for you. They're the fish that have the highest amounts of omega-3 fatty acids, for example but you shouldn't want to eat those fish more than twice a week. Right? Other sources of mercury include things like dental amalgams and vaccinations. Uh, dental silver dental fillings have mercury in them. Now, the jury's still out about how dangerous those are. As far as I'm concerned, you don't want to put mercury in your body. I think it's a bad idea. Uh, last year, the American Dental Association, after 30 years of arguing, finally said there might be an issue with mercury containing <laughs> dental amalgams. That being said, I do not recommend having them removed if you have mercury-containing dental amalgams. The removal process utilizes a high-speed drill that actually vaporizes the mercury and makes it gaseous and you breathe it all in. So it's actually more dangerous to remove it than it is just to leave it alone, let the filling fail, those fillings usually fail within 15 years, and then have it replaced with a uh, composite. Uh, if you're going to have them removed, there are dentists that are certified for removal of mercury fillings. They use hoods, they use vacuums to pull out the gas, they use uh, dental dams to prevent the mercury from getting into your body. Okay? So uh, that's a choice that you have to make. Most people, their fillings are probably going to fail in a few years, just wait till they fail and then replace them. And then lastly, vaccinations. Uh, many vaccinations do contain uh, thimerosal. Thimerosal is a mercury-containing preservative. It's not part of the vaccine, it's the preservative. Uh, one of the abiding theories in the rise in autism back in the 1980s was the use of thimerosal vaccinations. Uh, they believed that the kids were getting much more, many more vaccinations than they used to, therefore more mercury. They reacted to that mercury and it wound up causing autism spectral disorders. Uh, I'm not going to take a stand on that. The jury's still out. Certainly it's been found that kids that have ADD, ADHD, autism, Asperger's syndrome tend to have more sequestered mercury than the general population. Okay? Whether it's from vaccinations or other sources, I couldn't tell you. All right? Now the recommendation is get mercury-free vaccines. Many states, 19 states now, have outlawed thimerosal. Um, I will tell you this, all flu shots are made by two companies and they use thimerosal in flu shots. So if you get a flu shot, you're getting mercury in the shot. 
Uh, you can rec request a mercury-free flu shot, but it usually takes two weeks. So you have to request it for your, from your physician and they have to order it, okay? So uh, is it dangerous? Well, it's very low levels of mercury, but when you start getting it over and over and over again, it does build up. And a little bit of something, a little bit of something else, usually the sum is greater than the, uh, the whole, the effect is greater than the sum of the parts.